Good morning, gentlemen. I'm coming to you this morning again from the Deanship of the Common Year at Majma University. This is the English Second Language course, the online version. I am your teacher, Dale Warren, and we are doing speaking. And today we are doing Unit 3 of Level 1. Last week we covered Units 1 and 2. So if the video last week said Unit 1 and this one says Unit 3, we have not missed Unit 2. Unit 1 and 2 were covered together last week. All right. The textbook is the same textbook that we used last week, which is Q Skills for Success, Book 1, Listening and Speaking. So if you look at your front page, it will tell you Q Skills for Success, Listening and Speaking, and at the top, there should be a 1 in the right-hand corner. And it should say Second Edition. If you look in the top left hand corner of my screen if you've got the hard copy your book should have an orange picture like the book the small copy of the book in the left hand corner all right i trust you've all got the book if you haven't got the book please pause the video and go and get the book Okay, our lesson today is going to be on the construction of the future tense with the going to construction. And we are on page 57 of our textbook. So I need you all to go to page 57. The section that we are looking at should look like that. All right. Guys, if you find that I am going too fast with the teaching videos, or if I go through a particular point too fast, please just pause the video or move it back a few minutes to the part that you didn't get and listen again. Because I know sometimes when it's online teaching and I cannot see the students and they cannot stop me with a question or tell me I'm going too fast, sometimes people miss things. So as I say, if the video is going too fast for you, just pause it until you've caught up with what was being done or just go back a few minutes to the part where you got lost and go over it the second time. All right, we're talking today about the future tense. Okay, let us firstly define the future tense of the verb. The future tense of the verb is those forms of the verb that we use when we speak about something that has not happened yet. Okay, so if I say Sharifa will drive to Jeddah tomorrow. Sharifa hasn't driven to Jeddah yet. It is still today. So that is the future and I know it's the future because we are saying tomorrow. And because it is the future, we put in that word will in front of the main verb. And that puts the main verb into the future. If I say Sultan will recover from coronavirus by next week. Next week has not got you yet. 
We are still in this week. So I know this is going to happen in the future. It hasn't happened yet. So again, I put that little word will in front of the main verb, which is recover. And that makes this a future sentence. If I say they shall play football on Friday, and today is only Monday, they have not played yet. It is still in the future. And because it is in the future, I put that little word shall in front of the main verb play. And that tells the listener that this action hasn't happened yet. It is still going to happen in the future. Now, the normal way that we make the future tense in English is with a very simple four-block construction. We have a subject, we use either will or shall, you can use either of those words. We have a base verb, which is the verb in its simplest form, and we have a predicate. So if I use this construction, and I look at my examples that we used, and we start with sentence number one. In sentence number one, we have our subject, Sharifa. We have the word will, which is an auxiliary verb, putting things into the future. We have the base verb, which is drive, and our predicate to jitter tomorrow. So we know that tomorrow Sharifa will drive to jitter. If we look at sentence number two, we have a subject, Sultan. We use the word will to make it future. We have the base verb, recover. And Sultan is going to recover from coronavirus by next week. If we look at example number three, again, we have our subject, they. And the subject doesn't have to be they, it could be Manchester United. Shall and shall, like will, puts the main verb into the future. Our main verb, play, is in its base form, the simplest form. And our predicature, football on Friday. So we have a very simple sentence, subject, Manchester United, auxiliary verb, shall, main verb, play, and the predicate. Manchester United shall play football on Friday, and I know this is in the future, firstly because of that little word, shall, which puts it into the future, and secondly because it says on Friday, and it is not Friday yet. So I know this is a future construction. All right. Now, that is the way we normally make the future tense in English. But there is another way to make the future tense, which we often use also, and this is what we call the going to construction. This is a five block construction, and these are the five blocks. You have a subject, you have the verb to be in the present tense, not the future tense, in the present tense. You have the word going, you have the infinitive, Remember from last lesson, the infinitive is to plus the base verb. And lastly, you have the 
pretty good. All right. So, a very simple construction, subject, verb to be in the present tense, going, your infinitive, which is two plus the base verb, and your predicate. All right. Now, to make this construction correctly, you first have to know how to conjugate the verb to be in the present tense. Okay, this is a future construction, but the verb to be stays in the present tense. So, in the present tense, the verb to be conjugates as follows. When the subject is R, the verb to be takes the form M. When the subject is you, or we, or they, in the present tense, the verb to be will take the form R. When the subject is he, or she, or it, the verb to be will take the form is. So remember, in the present tense, the verb to be has three forms. R, when it is the subject, takes the form am. You, or we, or they, when they are the subject, will take the form are. He, she, or it, all three will take the form is, when you are conjugating the verb to be in the present tense. Okay, I need you to know that because you need to know these correct forms to make this construction. All right, let's see how we then make the future tense with the going to construction. We start with the subject, ah. Now remember what I've just said, the verb to be in the present tense, and in the present tense, the verb to be takes the form am when the subject is ah. I am going. Block number three is just that word going. Block number four is our infinitive. And remember what I said, which we covered last week. The infinitive is that little word to plus the base verb. So here we have to and the base verb is eat. And when I say to eat, that is my infinitive. And then my predicate here is capsa. So if I say I'm going to eat capsa, it means I'm not eating it now, but sometime in the future, maybe tonight, or tomorrow, or next week, or in an hour's time, I will be eating capsa. You are going to play football in Taif. Again, we have a subject, you. When the verb to be is in the present tense and the subject is you, it takes the form are. Third block, going. We have an infinitive made of the word to and the main verb play. So our infinitive is to play. And our predicate here is football and type. So you are going to play football and type. He is going to swim in the Nile next week. Okay. Again, the subject. We have the subject he, and when the subject is he, in the present tense, the verb to be takes the form is. We have going in block number three. We have an infinitive in block number four, and the infinitive consists of two words, that little word to, the particle, and swim, which is the base verb. 
and our predicate in the Nile next week. Remember, this is a future tense. Inaz is our subject. Inaz is she. So, because Inaz is she, when you use the verb to be in the present tense, it goes to the form is. Going is in the same block as going for all the other sentences. To our particle and our main verb marry and we put when we add to to the main verb we have an infinitive and our predicature is a millionaire. Inaz is going to marry a millionaire. Okay we is our subject. When it is we and it is present tense the verb to be takes the form of we are going, again, just that word going by itself, then our infinitive to plus the main verb pass. We are going to pass, and our predicate is English. The Turks are our subject in the last sentence. And the Turks would be they, and they would take the form are, when you conjugate the verb to be in the present tense, it will take R as the subject, as the, sorry, as the verb, the, the subject they would take R. Again, we have going. Again, we have an infinitive to plus the verb cause. And our predicature is trouble. Now, these are very simple constructions. If we did it the normal way, we would just say our will eat capsa. And that is the normal future. If we did this one, you are going to play football and type the normal way, we would just say you will play football and type. It means exactly the same. They are both future constructions. It is just two different ways to say it. Okay, let us go back though to the going to construction. I am going Okay, so that is the way you make the future sense with going to. Now, these are all positive sentences. If I wanted to make it a negative sentence, all I would have to do is put not. And here I would put you are not going to play football. Or I can put, you aren't going to play football. If I say he is going to swim in the Nile next week, that is positive. If I want to make it negative, I will just say he is not going to swim in the Nile next week, or he isn't going to swim in the Nile next week. So very simple. All you have to do is put a not after the verb to be, and that will then make it a negative sentence. If you want to change the positive into a negative. So if we said we are going to pass English, and that is our positive sentence, and we wanted to make it negative, all we would have to do is say not, or we could contract the not and say we aren't going to pass English. Okay, so quite simple. We have a five block construction. You start with your subject. Uh, you take your form of the verb to be in the present tense, whichever one is correct. Um, in block three, going 
in block 4, your infinitive with to and whatever verb you want to use. And in block 5, you have your predicate. And to make it negative, all you do is put in not in block number 2. All right. That is a statement with the going to construction. Now, if we want to ask a yes or no question with the going to construction, we still have a five block construction. But all that happens is that block number two becomes block number one, and block number one becomes block number two. So we will say, am I going to get the money you owe me? So if this were a statement, I would say, I am going to get the money you owe me. But to turn it into a question, all I do, I put the M first, I put the R second, and I make this a question mark at the end. So, if we are asking a yes or no question with the going to construction, okay? Yes or no questions with the going to construction. We will start with the word am, are, or is. We will have secondly the subject, thirdly going, fourthly the infinitive, fifthly the predicate. Am I going to get the money you owe me? Are you going to buy a new book? So I'm asking you a question. Are you going to buy a new book? And remember, when we ask a question, it has to be a question mark at the end of the sentence. That little mark there has to be a question mark at the end of each sentence. Are you going to buy a new book? Is Farida going to pass maths? It is a question. Are we going to survive the coronavirus. That is a question, so it has a question mark. Are the Italians going to score another goal? That is a question mark, because it is a question. If it were just a statement, I would say, the Italians are going to score another goal, and then it would be a sentence, not a question, and we would put a full stop. But because it is a question, there's a question mark there, and then because it is a question, the R comes first, and the subject comes second. All right, please note again. Even if the M comes first, if the subject is R in the second block, then the verb to be must be M in the present tense. If the subject is U, the verb to be must be R in the present tense. If the subject is Farida, she, the verb to be must be is in the present tense. Now, these questions are what we call yes or no questions. The reason we call this a yes question or a no question, a yes or no question, is because it can only have one answer. If I say to Dr. Jalal, Jalal, am I going to get the money you owe me? Jalal will either say, Yes, Dale, I will pay you tomorrow, or no, Dale, I don't have the money. You are going to get a yes answer or a no answer. If I say to Ali, Ali, are you going to buy a new book? Ali can either say, yes, I will get the new book tomorrow, 
Or Ali can say, no, I don't have money to buy a new book. If I ask, is Farida going to pass maths? Her mother can say to me, no, Farida is hopeless at maths. She will fail. Or her mother can say, yes, Farida is brilliant at maths. She will pass. The reason these are yes or no questions is because the person who answers will either tell you yes or he will tell you no. He must give a yes or no answer. Yes, the Italians will score another goal. No, the Italians will not score another goal. He has to tell you either yes or no. Now, there is another form of question which we call an information question. An information question asks for information. And because it asks for information, it starts with a question word. So it will start with a question word like when. And when the question word is when, the information you are asking for is what time. It will start with a question word like where. And when we ask, start with a question word like where, the information we are asking for is in what place. If we ask how are we going to survive coronavirus, the information we are asking is by what means, by what manner will we survive coronavirus, what will we do to survive coronavirus. When we say, why are you going to buy a new book? If we ask that question, and our question word is why, then the information we are saying is, what is the reason that you are buying a new book? For what reason are you going to get a new book? So information questions always have to start with a question word like when or why or what or who or how. And those question words are asking the person for some information. He has to give a time or a place or a person's name or reason. That is the information that the question word is asking for. Now, when we start going to question with a question word. The question word will come first. But other than that, the information question is exactly the same as the yes or no question. The only difference is that we have put one more block in the construction right at the front and that one more block takes a question word. So if we look at our examples of information questions, block number one, we have a question word, when. Block two, we have M is or R. Block three here is the subject R, and because the subject is R, we know the verb to be must be M in the present tense. In block four, we have the word going. Block five, we have our infinitive. And in block six, we have our predicate. So our question is, when am I going to get the money you owe me? And you will probably say, I will pay you in 2050. That is the time. All right. Why are you going to buy a new book? We are starting with a question word in block one. We have are, which is a form of the verb to be in the present tense, in our second block. In our third block, 
we have you as the subject. And because the subject is you, we know that in the second block, the verb to be must take the form R. In the next block, why are you going? Going is going to remain the same. In the fifth block, we still have the infinitive to bar. And the sixth block, a new book. If we look at the next example, we start with a question word, how is, is a form of the verb to be, Farida, and Farida is she, which is why we know that the verb to be has to be, is. In the block number four, we still have that word going. Block number five, to pass, our infinitive, and our predicate is mass. If we look at our last example, when is a question word, it is asking the time. Are is a form of the verb to be in the present tense. Our subject is the Italians. The Italians are they. So the verb to be has to be are in the present tense. Going is the same fourth block in all these sentences. The fifth block again is the infinitive. It is that little word to plus the base verb. And then our predicate is another goal. All right. Now, the reason we call these information questions are because they are all starting with question words. And the question words ask for specific information. Why asks for a reason? When asks for a time? Where asks for a place? Who asks for a person? These are information questions because the question word asks for specific information. When asks for the time, where asks for the place, how asks for the way, something will be done. All right. What we have to do last is the contracted forms which are pretty simple. If we write the long form, I am going, we can contract it to the short form, I'm going. Okay. A contraction just means a short form. If we say, I am not going, the shortened form is, I'm not going. Okay, so the A drops away. So I am not going, long form. I'm not going, short form. We are going, and the long, short form is we're going. We are not going can be contracted two ways. It can be we are not going, or we aren't going. You are going, which is positive, contracts to you going. You are not going, sorry, you going contracts, you are going contracts to you are going, and you are not going contracts to you not going, or you aren't going. He is going contracts to the short form, he's going, and he is not going contracts either to he's not going or he isn't going. So when you have the negative contractions. They can take two forms. The positive contraction will only take one form. Okay, so I'm putting the negative forms in red, and as you can see, most of the negative forms can either be contracted to we are not going or we aren't going. There is two 
possible ways that you can contract the negative form. There's only one way in which you can contract the positive forms. Okay. That is basically all we need to know about the going to construction. It is used for the future tense and it is exactly the same as saying he will or he shall, he is going to. It means the same thing. Okay, what I want you all to do is turn to page 58 and our homework today is this exercise 58a. Alright, now somebody has sent an email to a friend. They want you to fill in the parts that are missing. So underneath the line they give you the verb you must use. Join or do or take or be. Okay. Now, what you have to do is look firstly at the subject. Then you have to look at the verb they are giving you and then you will have to put in the answer. So if we look at number two here, number two, and I'm going to give it for an example, has we as the subject. Right there you see that word we. Now you know that if it has the word we, then if our possible answers are am, are, or is, we is going to take are. You do not say we am, and we do not say we is. We then know that you put going to, and the verb here is do. So, what we would have here in number two are going to do. We are going to do. So, those words in red would be your answer. Are going to do. If we go to number three, all right, let's not do number three, let's do number four. Number four says it starts with it. So if the subject is it, and our possible answers would be M, R, is, it takes the form, is. Then we know we have to put in going. The verb is be, so we make our infinitive, it is going to be. So the answer for four, what you would fill in here, it is going to be. All right. So basically, that is what I need you to do. I want you to work through this 
exercise, page 58A, and on each of these open spaces, I need you to fill in the missing words. When you have done that, take a photograph of the page, and I need you to email that photograph to your English speaking teacher. Okay. So, All right, so we want you, the homework is, as I say, page 58, exercise A, you are completing the letter or the email that this guy is sending to his friend. You are going to put in the missing words in each of those spaces. When you have done that, just take a photograph of this page and send it as an attachment to an email to your speaking teacher. All right. Thank you very much, guys. And I will be back again in a week's time.